Well, Ube Shabanda is TRT World's defence analyst and he joins me now in the studio. Good to have you back in the studio again. What are you hearing from your sources about the, the latest on the ground? Well, we're seeing some extensive clashes in the northern part of Afrin province on the Turkish border where the Free Syrian Army and Turkish commandos have captured a series of villages, strategic villages, that were used as infiltration routes uh, by the YPG terrorists. Where these villages were also used as key launching pads for cross-border attacks. We've seen some footage of a uh, network of tunnels and concrete bunkers that were also liberated by Turkish commandos in the Free Syrian Army. These tunnel networks are used by the YPG terrorists to move materiel and personnel throughout areas without uh, fear of airstrikes. So it's been steady movement forward. It's been cautious movement forward, but there have been some key advances, but we can expect some even more heavier fighting in the days to come for sure. You mentioned their tunnels. I mean, how long has the YPG been in control of this area? And does that impact how dug in, I guess, they are in this region and, and perhaps make it more difficult for Turkish troops who are advancing? Absolutely. The YPG has had many years to build defensive bunkers, both in the mountainside and underneath houses, uh, networks within the villages. The YPG essentially took over the entire province by 2000, late 2011, early 2012, as the Syrian uprising spread and the YPG took over local control of the, of the city of Afrin and the entire province. So at least since 2014, the YPG terrorists have been fortifying their position and they've been building infiltration routes both cross borders into Turkey as well as into neighboring villages that are controlled by the Assad regime. So you can also look into key infiltration and escape routes in the southern part of Afrin province that borders the uh, Syrian regime occupied village of Nubal and Zahra. We, we have uh, some unconfirmed reports from opposition sources that this is a, the route that the YPG could be potentially moving in reinforcements from other parts of Syria into Afrin. So that could be a very important area that at some point the Turkish forces and the Free Syrian Army will have to close off that southern approach that would allow the YPG to move additional weapons into Afrin. What is your feeling on, on the long-term plan here, on Turkey's long-term plan? I mean, once it asks the YPG, how does it stop these fighters from crossing over the border and launching attacks from inside Turkey? What, what's the long-term plan here, do you think? Well, as part of any asymmetric warfare operation, you really have three main components. One, there's the actual physical battle on the battlefield where you're attacking the enemy. And then and, and eliminating that enemy. And there's two, gaining the trust of the populace. Uh, you have to build that trust of the, the community, of the tribal leaders. And three, you have to win the information warfare component of this operation. So it's going to be multifaceted. This is going to be a very complex operation. You have to sustain these gains to prevent the YPG and Daesh from re-infiltrating and re-emerging. And you do that by working with the Free Syrian Army, who are sending messages out both in Arabic and in Kurdish. We saw earlier a Kurdish member of the Free Syrian Army talking about how the Kurdish community in Afrin and in Syria is not inherently supportive of the YPG. The YPG has been imposed upon them. So that social aspect after the actual physical fighting is going to be crucial to sustain the trust of the local populace that you're liberating them from YPG oppression. You mentioned there uh, the issue of information. I mean, in every conflict, uh, the message that's getting out internationally, but also to the local population is so, so important. Who's winning the information war here? Well, Kim, the information war aspect is, of this operation is absolutely crucial. The YPG has run a very active disinformation campaign. The latest example has been uh, the YPG and their allies, uh, in, in particular the former head of the PYD, which is the political uh, wing of the, y, the YPG group. Uh, Saleh Muslim had recently tweeted out a picture of injured children that was then uh, proved to be actually of Syrian children that were injured in an airstrike in eastern Ghouta outside of Damascus by Assad regime airstrikes. So we're seeing a very sort of shameless, uh, brazen effort by the YPG and their supporters to push out these fake images, as it were, of injured children that were actually injured by the Assad regime in other Syrian cities. So this part of the information warfare is what the YPG hopes to gain international sympathy 
um, and to paint themselves as the victim in this conflict, even though they're the ones launching cross-border attacks that we've seen have killed uh, a couple of in, in, uh, civilians in Rehanli and Killa, so that you can expect even more fake news and fake pictures to be pushed out by the YPG internationally to try to gain international support. It's, it's the age we live in, isn't it? it Having to, you is. really have to uh, be very aware of, of where you're getting your uh, sources, where, you know, where, where everything is coming from. Just finally, this idea of a safe zone that's been floated by the US or Turkey's been talking about, um, and, and Turkey said, no, the relationship between Ankara and Washington really has to improve before that's going to be discussed. What do you make of that? Well, the idea of a safe zone in northern Syria has been long under discussion between the U.S. and Ankara. In fact, during the Obama administration, there was extensive discussion between the two countries on establishing a safe zone. It really essentially went nowhere because the Obama administration was not willing to engage in Syria, and they were not uh, willing to provide the political capital and the military capital to force the Assad regime to stop the attacks against civilians. Many believe that the uh, Obama administration was more concerned about achieving a nuclear deal with Iran, who, which of course is an ally of the Assad regime, than achieving any really true safe zone deal in Syria. So that was very problematic. And at that point, it seemed that the, uh, that the U.S. put all of its support behind the YPG and the Syrian Democratic Forces, which is their name, the cover for the YPG, instead of working with local Syrians to establish true safe zones when these atrocities cannot take place. So very little trust between the two countries as we're seeing atrocities continue uh, by the Assad regime and the YPG at this time. Thank you so much. Thank That's you. Ube Shavanda.